Hey everybody, today we are looking at section 1-4, which is pairs of angles. What we are going to look at today is five different angle pairs, um, and the first four of which are on this slide. So what we're going to look at first is adjacent angles. Okay, in layman's terms, basically adjacent angles are two angles that share a side. Okay, but there's two important, important things that you need to see here. They have a common vertex and a common side. Okay, so those are your biggies for your adjacent angles. So let's take a look at um, our first set of angles here, angles one and two. Okay, if I look here at angle one, angle one is this angle right here, okay? And then angle two is this angle right here, okay? They both share this vertex, okay? Both angles have this point as their vertex and they share this ray, okay? So we know that because of that, angles one and two are adjacent angles. A linear pair of angles are adjacent angles. So again, they share a vertex and a ray. Um, but this time they make a straight line. So these two sides, so this ray of this angle and this ray of this angle, these two make a line. Okay, they are opposite rays because again they start at the same point and go out in opposite directions so anytime you have an a pair of adjacent angles that form a line you are looking at a linear pair because linear has the word line in it okay so when we're looking at a linear pair see that word line and know that we're looking at two angles that form a line and they are adjacent so again they share a vertex in the side form a line all right, complementary and supplementary angles are angle terms that you have been exposed to previously. Um, so we know that complementary angles are two angles that add to their, both angle measures are going to add to 90 degrees. Supplementary angles are two angles that add to 180 degrees. Now, something that is important with this is if we look at these three pair, or three, three angles, okay? If I look at angle A and angle B, these two angle measures are going to add to 90. So angles A and B are complementary, all right? If I look at the measures for angles A and C, these two are going to add to 180, so angles A and C are supplementary. Notice that these are not touching each other, okay? Um, we can have, when we're talking about complementary or supplementary angles, they can either be adjacent angles, or non-adjacent angles. If we look at complementary adjacent angles, they would look something like this, okay? So we would have from that vertex, they would share this side, but they would form a right angle. So anytime you see this little right angle box right here, this little box in the corner, that means you have a 90 degree angle. It is a right angle, okay? So your adjacent complementary angles would look like this, your adjacent supplementary angles would look like this because remember your straight angle measures 180 degrees. So these two angles would be complementary. Notice they look a lot like these, okay? Linear pair of angles are also supplementary, okay? Which means that they add to 180 degrees. So um, complementary and supplementary angles can either be adjacent or non-adjacent. Either way, it does not matter. Okay, the important thing there is their angle measures. One of the things that sometimes it's hard to remember is which one is complementary, which one is supplementary. Um, if you forget, remember that the way I remember it is C comes before S in the alphabet and 90 comes before 180 when you're counting. So the smaller ones, the lower ones go together and the higher ones go together. Okay, so with example one here, we want to look and see whether or not our angles are adjacent or non-adjacent, or do they make a linear pair? So we're going to start by looking at angles one and two. So here's angle one right here. All right, and here is angle two. I want to know, first things first, let's look and determine whether or not they're adjacent. 
because if they are not adjacent, remember that they cannot be a linear pair because the definition of a linear pair is that you have two adjacent angles, okay? Um, so when we look here, notice they share vertex B and they both share this ray right here, all right? So angles one and two are adjacent. So now the next question is, is are they a linear pair? Well, when we look here and we look and see the other sides of my angle, they do not make a line, okay? So that is not a linear pair. This is not a straight line, okay? So these are just adjacent angles. All right? Then let's take a look at angles two and four. So here is angle two. All right, and here is angle four. Okay, let's highlight here for a second the sides of the angles. Here's the side for four, and here's the sides for two. Notice here that this portion is shared by both angles, okay? But it is the only piece of those sides that are shared. Angles two and four do not have a common vertex, all right? The vertex for angle two is up here. The vertex for angle four is down here, so they do not share a vertex. They really only share a piece of one side, which is this piece right here. So they are not adjacent because they don't share a vertex and they don't share the entire side. So these are not adjacent angles. Okay, then we're going to look at angles one and three. All right, angle three is right here. Angle one is right here. Okay, so when we look at these two, we notice that they share a vertex. It's right here at B. They also share this side. So they are adjacent, all right? So now the next question is, is are they a linear pair? So we look at the other side of angle three and angle one and notice that, yes, these two here make a straight line. So I know that angles one and three are a linear pair. I do not need to say that they are adjacent and a linear pair, again, because part of the definition of a linear pair is that they are adjacent. All right, so if you have any questions on this or the vocabulary, please write that down on your note-taking guide now. Okay, with this one, we want to find the complement and supplement of the angles. All right, the way we can do this is if I'm looking at a complement, I can just subtract what I know from 90. If I'm looking at a supplement, I can just subtract what I know from 180, all right? Because I know complementary angles add to 90, supplementary add to 180, all right? Um, so for A here, I'm looking at the complement of angle M. So if I know this is angle M, I wanna know what its complement is gonna be. Again, remember that complement is 90 degrees. So I'm gonna do 90 minus 26.8. And when I put that in my calculator, I'm going to get 63.2 degrees is the measure of my complementary angle to this one. All right, for B, I want to supplement, which is 180 degrees, and it's going to work in basically the same way. I'm going to take 180, and from that, I'm going to subtract my angle. But this one is a little different in the sense that they're giving us the angle measure as an expression of 2y plus 20, not a number, okay? So that means that my, uh, my supplement will also be an expression. If I'm not given a number, I can't get a definite number answer, all right? So we want to figure this out, simplify this. I remember that this is a negative 1 here in front of your parentheses, and we need to distribute that through. So I'm going to do 180 minus 2y, and then again, I distribute that to that negative 20 here and here, okay? So negative one times positive 20 is a negative 20. And now we can just combine like terms. So 180 minus 20 is 160 minus 2y. 
and that is degrees. Again, we want to make sure we're putting all of our symbols, all right? So again, whatever my supplement is, which I'll find out if I ever get Y, I just subtract that from 180, all right? Again, if you have questions on that, please write that down on your note-taking guide now. All right, this one is a little different in the sense that we are not given a number. All right, we have, we wanna find the measure of a complement. So if we're finding the measure of a complement, remember again that that's 90 degrees, okay? And I want to know that if my complement to an angle is three degrees less than twice the complement. Okay, so let's kind of break this down a little. I have two angles that are complementary. I'm just going to call them A and B for the sake of writing something down. So I know that measure of angle A and B are going to add to 90 degrees. Okay. I don't know the letters. It's just I'm making it up to have something to call it right now. All right. One angle is three degrees less than twice the complement. So let's say angle A is the complement that I'm looking for. I'm going to just call it X. I can pick any letter I want. It does not matter. That is my complement. I'm just picking a variable. Okay. Now, the other angle is three degrees less than twice the complement. Okay. Well, let's kind of start with the back half of this. If I have twice the complement, what is twice this? Well, that's 2x. Okay. What is three degrees less than that? Well, it's 2x minus 3. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. This is three degrees less than twice the complement. All right, now since this is a positive one here, if we distribute, nothing changes. So we can go ahead and combine like terms. X plus 2X is 3X minus 3 equals 90. We are going to add 3 to both sides. So I'm going to get 3X is equal to 93. And when I divide both sides, I'm going to get that X is equal to 31 degrees. So the measure of my comp or my complement is 31 degrees, right? If I wanted to know the other angle, I could just take that and subtract it from 90. Or you can always double check it by plugging it in here and do 2 times 31 minus 3 and make sure that those two angles that you get add to 90 degrees. That's a good way to do a self-check and make sure that you have set your original equation up correctly. All right? Questions on that? Go ahead and write them down now. All right, the last type of angles that we are looking at are called vertical angles. Okay, the key thing here is um, I want you to notice that when we're looking at these, they are formed by two intersecting lines. So let's just take a look at my picture. Notice that my two lines here are making an X. Okay. If you have two lines that kind of look like this, and they will do this to you to try to kind of mess you up, you will not get vertical angles here because this piece is not a line, okay? It is an angle. It is not a straight angle. It is not a line. It's bent, okay? So we don't want anything that's bent. If you have that, you do not have vertical angles anywhere, okay? So you're looking for that nice straight X. All right, so when we have vertical angles, if you think about things that are vertical, they're kind of like across from each other. So if I just look for a second at angle one, right, angle one is right here. Its vertical angle is going to be across from it, which is right here. So it's the top and the bottom of the X, right? Those are vertical angles. If we look at the sides of the angle, okay, if I look at here and here with angle three, all right? And then here and here with angle one. Notice that this ray here, this side of this angle and this side of this angle form opposite rays, all right? So that's important for you to know that they're going to make that straight line again. Two and four are also vertical angles. So top and bottom, left and right, those are what are gonna give you those vertical angles. So with example four, we wanna name those angles. So it says name one pair. We're gonna go ahead and name both. So if I'm looking here, I'm looking at this angle, and this angle is going to also be vertical to that one. 
So I can say angle E, D, F, and angle G, D, H are vertical angles. Okay. The next set of angles is I can look at here and here. Okay. They are across from each other. They're not adjacent. Okay, so that's another kind of key part here is non-adjacent. So they don't share a side. The only thing they share is a vertex. And again, we're looking at those X's. So I can say angle E, D, G and angle F, D, H. Okay, so those are my two pairs of vertical angles. All right, my next question is do they appear to have the same measure? So if you look at this angle here and this angle here, do they look like they're about the same size? And that answer should be yes. We will find that out in a later section that indeed vertical angles will be congruent. They will have the same measure, um, but we'll get there. But I just want you to recognize that now, yes, they do look like they are the same measure. So yes, they look the same. All right, so if you have questions on that, go ahead and write that down now as well, um, and we will answer those in class. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will see you later.